Okay, this is lesson 2.5 in the AP Calculus curriculum. We're doing applying the power rule. Our learning objective is to calculate derivatives of familiar functions. And specifically, we're going to direct, use the direct application of the definition of the derivative to calculate the derivative for functions of form f of x equals x to some power. Here we're going to do, uh, we're going to define the power rule and we're going to uh, give you a proof uh, for integer powers, but it's going to apply to all real number powers. And then we'll work some examples in this video. So what is the power rule for derivatives? It says that if we have a function f of x equals x to some power, some real number power, then f prime of x is equal to that power multiplied by x raised to that power minus one. That's the power rule. And basically it says that if f of x equals x squared, then f prime of x is equal to two times x to the first power. If f of x equals x to the first power, then f prime of x equals one times x to the zero power or just one. Before we prove this for the integer powers, now this applies also, let's go ahead and say this, this also applies for any real number. If we had f of x equals x to the negative square root of two, then f prime, oops, that should be it, indicate not, f prime of x is equal to negative square root of two times x to the negative square root of two minus one. This applies to any real number power that you can bring that exponent out, multiply it times x, and then subtract one from the original power. Before we'll go on, need to establish, before we do this proof, need to establish for you um, a binomial distribution or a binomial expansion. We need to look and see if we have x plus h to the zero power that anything to the zero power, any real number power except zero is one. H is going to be a positive number because of what we're using it for. So that's not going to be zero. So X plus H to the zero is one. X plus H to the one power to the first power is equal to one X plus one H. X plus H to the second power. If we multiply that out and multiply X plus H times X plus H. We get one X squared plus two hx plus h squared or one h squared. If we do x plus h to the third power, we could multiply this out and you would see it, but it would give me one x cubed plus three x squared h plus three h squared x plus one h cubed. If we did x plus h to the fourth power, Again, you can multiply this out and verify it in the algebra. It's going to be 1x to the fourth plus 4x cubed h plus 6x squared h squared plus 4x times h cubed plus 1h to the fourth. We'll go ahead and do one more. Maybe we see the pattern. x plus h to the fifth power. It's going to be 1x to the 5th plus 5x to the 4th h plus 10x to the 3rd h squared plus 10x to the 2nd h cubed plus 5x h to the 4th plus 1h to the 5th. main thing I want you to see here as we do this expansion is that the leading coefficient is always one, that every other term has an h, and that the coefficient of the second term is equal to n. So we can broaden this and see the binomial expansion for x plus h to the nth power. We're going to have to do this when we do the proof here in a minute. It's going to be 1 times x to the n plus n times x to the n minus one times h plus, and now I'm just going to 
generalize these, I'm gonna put an A here. Just some A sub N minus two times X to the N minus two times H squared. And each successive power of X is going to decrease in each term and each successive power of H is going to increase by one in each term. So that this is the pattern is going to repeat until I get to a sub two x squared h to the n minus two plus a one times x times h to the n minus one plus one times h to the nth power. If you can accept for me that binomial expansion and we can verify that, like I said, you can do that algebraically and see that the pattern continues, then we can prove this for integer powers of x. So we're going to go on and do that next. The power rule we've defined. Oops. So we want to prove this. So we're going to let f of x equal x to the n power, where n is some positive integer power. The proof for the other real numbers besides integers is a little more complicated, but we'll prove it for this and then it's extended. And so we want to say that the limit as h goes to zero, this is where we're going to get f prime. The limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h and we can apply what we just looked at a minute ago limit as h goes to zero f of x plus h x plus h to the n minus x to the n over h and what we just showed with the binomial expansion this is going to be the same as the limit as h goes to zero of x to the n plus n times x to the n minus one times h plus some number a, we'll call a sub n minus two, times x to the n minus two, times h squared. And we're gonna keep going with that until we get to a sub two, x squared, h to the n minus two, plus a sub one, times x, times h to the n minus one, plus h to the nth power. That's the f, x plus h to the n. And then we're going to subtract x to the nth power, and that's all over h. And you might see already the x to the n's cancel each other when we do this limit definition. And so this becomes equal to the limit as h goes to zero. If we divide every one of these remaining terms by h, we get n times x to the n minus one plus a sub n minus two times x to the n minus two times h. And now the powers of h are going to increase by one until we finally get to h to the n over h to the n minus one, or sorry, over h is gonna be h to the n minus one. And since this limit as h goes to zero, all of these terms with the h's go to zero. This limit equals n times x to the n minus one, and that is f prime of x. That's the proof for integer powers of x. But like we said, this applies for all real number powers of x. So a few examples. Let's look at a function and let's say that g of x equals x to the 10th power, then g prime of x, is equal to 10 times x to the ninth power. Bring the power outside, multiply that times the variable, raised to the power minus one. If we have h of x equals x to the pi power, then, whoops, that's h prime. h prime of x equals pi times x to the pi minus one. If I have k of x equals x to the negative one half power, then k prime of x is equal to the negative one half, same power, multiplied by x raised to that power minus one, negative one half minus one is gonna be negative three halves. 
It doesn't matter what the real number of power is. If I have, uh, let's say, y of x equals x to the 999th power, then y prime of x is equal to 999 times x to the 998th power. And that is the power rule for derivatives.